This deeper dive is going to cover injection flaws. One of the most popular injection flaws is called SQL injection. This can occur anytime you have an input field that gets passed to a backend database. But the first step of an injection flaw is to find one. So let's start with our Hackers Bank application. This is a fairly straightforward banking application to demonstrate some concepts. Let's start by logging in. If you use username user1, Type in user one's password and click log in. And as you see, we have some you know very basic functionality: change password, list accounts, log out, fund transfer, post message. So very straightforward stuff. So for now, let's log out. So let's see the message that comes up when you type in the wrong user ID and password. User one, type in the wrong password on purpose and click login. It says invalid login ID, please try again. So if this is the scenario we find ourselves in, all we can really do is try to attack these two input fields, login ID and password. So the way we start is just by sending long strings into the input fields. And I'm changing the characters so you can see that I'm typing in a longer and longer string. If this were a real-world scenario, we would actually send thousands and thousands of characters to each of the input fields. But for now, this is let's just send a pretty long string just so we can get the idea. When I click on the login prompt, let's see what happens. So we get the exact same message. So that means this didn't work, so we need to try something else. Let's clear out the input field. This time, let's try all the special characters on the keyboard. And let's click on the login prompt to see what happens. Hmm, that's interesting. Clearly we did something here that worked, at least from the attacker's point of view. We got this error, this very detailed error message that says incorrect syntax error near semicolon, unclosed quotation mark after the character string, and then a bunch of characters, and password. When we see a message like this, it usually means that we have a SQL injection possibility. And what that means is that the single quote character is usually all we need to find this out. So let's type in a single quote by itself and see what happens. Type in a single quote, click log in. And sure enough, here's the message we receive. Unclosed quotation mark after the character string and password. Incorrect syntax near and password. OK, so the single quote clearly broke something. So let's head over to the virtual whiteboard and find out why this broke. Welcome to the virtual whiteboard. Here we'll explore our SQL injection scenario in detail. In the Hackers Bank application you just saw, we can assume that since we're asking for a user ID and a password, that we're probably sending that user ID and password to a backend database to do a database query. So whenever we have a scenario like that, we can hypothesize what that query would look like. Let's take a guess and add it to our virtual whiteboard. This is probably a pretty safe guess. You have a select statement. You're selecting something from a table. And then you have a where clause that says where login ID equals something and password equals something else. So if I were to have typed in user ID Rob and the password password, this is what would happen to the query. We would go to the database and say, is there a login ID named Rob? And if so, is this password password? But the issue we saw was that when we typed in a single quote, it caused a syntax error. Well, now it becomes obvious why. By adding in a single quote here, we create an unclosed quotation mark here. This is what generates the syntax error, and this is why it breaks. This is also why SQL injection works. Part of the challenge we have to overcome here is that we're looking for a login ID and a password. If we could somehow replace this AND with an OR, this would change things dramatically because now, instead of having to have, you know, if login ID is true and password equals true, now you really just have to have one or the other. 
So let's extend that concept a little bit. We've already terminated this string here, so this is now a legal SQL statement. So let's start from table where login ID equals blank is perfectly legal. Now let's add in our OR clause, OR. So we have login ID equals blank, which is, you know, hopefully false. Or, now we need something that equals to true. So a logical statement that's always equal to true is 1 equal to 1. Is 1 equal to 1? Yes, always. So let's add 1 equals 1 here. So now our query is expanding. Select star from table where login ID equals blank, again false, or true. Now we still have the single quote and password equals and then our input field here to deal with. So we'll just use the comment character. Dash dash is the comment character in SQL Server. So we use dash dash. Now that will work. Select star from table where login ID equals blank or true. So now our attack string simply becomes a single quote or 1 equals 1 dash dash. If we type this into our login prompt, this should effectively bypass our authentication mechanism. So let's go give that a try. Here we are back at the Hackers Bank application. Now remember our attack string is simply a single quote or 1 equals 1 dash dash. And then we click on the login prompt. Let's see what happens. Wow, so not only did we get in, but if you look closely here, you'll see that we got in as the administrator account. This is worse than we thought. Let's head back over to the virtual whiteboard to discuss why we were able to get in as the administrator user. Back over at the virtual whiteboard, we've added a database table to demonstrate what happened. Earlier, when we typed in user ID Rob password password, We went out to the database table and found the specific row that had user ID Rob password password. And since there was only one row with the user ID Rob, that was what let us in. But our attack scenario was different. We typed in single quote or one equals one dash dash. This query returns true at every case. Now what happens when you have a query that returns true is it returns all rows. And what happened in our scenario was that the admin user was the first row in the database. So that's the one that's going to come up when our query returns true. So would we be safe if we simply made a guest account the first row and then made admin the second row? Would that solve the problem? Well, it would solve the problem of the single quote or one equals one attack. It would definitely solve that because we, now we would get the guest account instead. However, it doesn't solve against all attacks. We could simply type admin single quote dash dash and get the same result. Because now our query reads select star from table where login ID equals admin. And since the rest of the line is commented out, if there is a username admin, then we will get in as that user. So the interesting thing with SQL injection is that there are frequently many ways to accomplish the same goal. The scenario we've just walked through is a very simple example of SQL injection. Feel free to explore the other deeper dives for more advanced SQL injection scenarios.